Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you all today on a highly anticipated webinar on modernized data quality for Oracle EBS Fusion Master Data Journey. Um, thanks for the wonderful opportunity here today to talk with our, uh, you know, this webinar. And you know, thanks for everyone. Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon for everyone. So. So the agenda itself, you know, talks about you know how our uh, most data management, you know, uh, data zen helps on the modernized way for the Oracle e-business or a Fusion Cloud. You know how it's going to take a lead of it. So let's talk about a few challenges uh, what we got on the traditional approach. Okay, when we go for any uh, data quality or data governance project, so the number one question pops up that you know data set and the attribution so the identification of a data set and the attributes are very complex process and the business team or id team they have to spend lots and lots of time to find out and analyze you know what are the fields or what are the data sets we are going to use it for the data quality or governance side so for instance uh, the oracle uh, window master if you take you know there are several uh, uh, I mean, uh, the groups are there, or the data sets are there, like a start from the supplier information, and then followed by the address, site, site usage, everything is there. So also some vital fields like a supplier uh, type and supplier category and their payment terms, those are, you know, vital fields. So how that was, you know, used, when we do a master data journey for our RPE business, maybe, you know, over a decade, these systems may be implemented. And uh, we are not sure about, you know, uh, when we implementing any data quality rules or something, you know, first of all, we need to identify the data set and attribute. That's a one complex uh, challenge I would put. And the second thing, identification of the rules. So decade of data talks about, you know, trillion or millions of data, which is part of uh, the uh, ERP systems. So wherein, you know, on top of that, if you are going to imply and uh, input any data set rules, maybe implicate uh, the business. So where we need to first identify what was there, you know, what all the rules can be applied, uh, that uh, we need to derive it. So by manually, if you are going and identifying these things, you know, very complex, and uh, we cannot, uh, you know, identify what are the rules, you know, because the combination of a grouping of fields, maybe, you know, uh, giving, a, I mean, a lot more rules. So picking a rules or picking, you know, which, uh, you know, rule can be used for the data governance, that's a very tricky one. And the last part, the data quality side. So if you put, you know, uh, getting a data from the Oracle system and going through, you know, multiple round of the data quality process, you know, how, you know, what are the rules we need to apply? So those are, you know, pretty much challenges uh, on the traditional approach, but still it is possible. So if you spend, you know, time and the energy and the right brain behind it, so we can make it that uh, traditional approach to be applied. But how, you know, today's modernized world, so how a enabled data engine, a data as an engine, how that helps to solve all these, you know, the traditional uh, approach problems. Number one, so data set. So data Zen got, you know, the powerful engine data assessment. Okay. So it's going to connect to the Oracle system and it's going to read. So for this uh, vendor example, so it's going to read the vendor data sets and it's going to provide what is the mapping or you know how each and every fields are utilized so with all the quality metrics start from the completeness uniqueness and uh, you know how the validations and the timeliness uh, accuracy everything it will go through and identify what are the data sets or the attributes uh, attributes are really required for to govern the data okay and uh, you know that assessment engine so today not just for the uh, customer or vendor data. So it is applicable for, you know, all most data today we are, you know, bringing on to the data zen. And number two, the data governance. So based on the data, uh, one example may be, you know, the email address. So earlier uh, that email address may not have a right pattern. So after that, so the data governance uh, uh, rules may be implied. So what happens, you know, for those, you know, the legacy data. So can we go to fix it or not? and you know the right patterns are going to be identified and the rules are going to be 
provided uh, from the data set okay? and uh, also from the template it's going to give the end-to-end -end, uh, business rules uh, what are the rules we need to use it and you know how we can fix the problems everything you know going to be based on just the data uh, based on the data it's going to provide all the rules okay to govern the data and uh, last but not least you know the data quality obviously it's going to scan through the entire data and it's going to provide the, all the detailed uh, results of you know what are the data quality issues on it and what are the rules needs to be picked or what are the rules can be you know used to curate the data so that, that part also available everything you know automated just to connect to the data and data is going to talk and data is going to driven this particular uh, approach where we can like, get the right set of attributes, right set of data sets and right set of rules so that that will be intact or fix the data issues rather than you know, bringing uh, something on a traditional way, hey, can we apply this rule or not? No. So the data is going to driven everything over here and providing this uh, modernized uh, DKM approach for the whole uh, Oracle uh, e-business or Oracle Fusion Cloud uh, you know, master data journey. Even during, you know, the data migration part of, you know, from a EBS to the Fusion, okay, that fitment between, you know, Oracle e-business and the Fusion can be tied together and what are the rules or what are the business uh, defaults, everything is required. That can be, you know, identified easily through this data assessment engine and data migration, you know, made very easy and quality data will be, you know, moved all the way to the Oracle Fusion Cloud. And uh, let me go to the next one. Uh, so, Surya, can you please you know, step in here to talk about how we are implementing uh, this particular solution for Oracle Master Data? Sure, Andrew, thank you. So, how data Zen will help you in the implementation of data quality and data governance for specifically the Oracle Master Data is, so we could see that there are five stages starting from the extraction to the to the loading stage one will be extracting the source records from the source instance so we have to establish a connection here so once the connection is established we will extract the data and then the stage two will automatically start stage two is called the data assessment stage this data assessment stage will compromise of the data profiling engine the data profiling engine will scan your source data and it will give a data profiling results where it is based on the templates and associated data objects. So these templates and data objects will be used for the stage three, which is data model generation. The data model generation is the stage where you will have all your DKIM rules combined with your data model and your business rules. This, this data models We'll be having we'll be having a business rules review which is the reviewer and also the extracted records will be used for removing duplicates which is consolidation in the data match so once we identify the data match in the stage three we will now process it to the data to the stage four which is data management so data management could be a like a, you can we can cleanse the records from the extracted one while doing, we have a lots of uh, inbuilt extractions and also associated data cleansings. And we could be able to call any third party trusted APIs here. For example, let's say Google API once, uh, for address cleansing. And then we will process it into the data management service where we'll have an efficient workflows. The workflow, the workflow will trigger each and every request to the assigned users. So once we get the approvals, we will load into the target systems through EDW. And once we load into the target applications, we will have a post validation here running over there. And you could see that data enrichment UI and pre-validation UI from the stage four is our major, uh, is our major functionality here. So once we load into the target application, which is Oracle EBS Cloud, so this is how we'll be implementing the data then on your data quality and data governance journey. Thank you. Thank you, Surya. 
and uh, these five steps are you know uh, really you know uh, the stage one and two three are going to be completely automated and you know stage four the data is going to be reviewed by the users and stage five you know, again automated once this is done you know the data is going to be loaded uh, into the target system so with lesser effort and the with the lesser you know the manual intervention the entire data quality is uh, taken care uh, by the data zen application and uh, time to go for the live demo so let me go into the demo instance and uh, let's walk through how i can you know completely do this uh, data migration journey using the data assessment and the data quality side of uh, data zen okay let's go here so i already logged in uh, into the oh sorry so i'm going to log in into the uh, c underscore planner user for uh, changes uh, demo instance so where in this instance uh, i'll be configured uh, you know, a couple of templates are installed so one of another you know, today's case uh, we are going to talk about uh, this supplier master okay and uh, let's go here and uh, opening up uh, the data assessment and you can see already I did a few assessments uh, for uh, uh, SAP, EBS, and the service flow. Now let's go here to the new. I'll go and create a. So today we are going to do here this assessment uh, for the supplier. Supplier. We'll keep it a small indication that you know, there's a demo M5. And uh, this is going to be the EBS uh, supplier assessment. And I'm going to choose, you know, these are the templates and domains which are already available item, bills of material, formula, recipe, customer, address, contact, supplier, supply side, contact, accounts, custom. Even I can create, you know, custom objects uh, through here. So I'll go here and uh, choose the supplier. So uh, going here, choose the template. So it's question number two, it is asking me to choose the template. And uh, the template, uh, I already installed uh, in this uh, demo instance. Also, source system also I configured, which is I'm going to do it uh, from the Oracle. And uh, you can see refer it. Uh, there are uh, certain templates are already available. Let's go and pick it up a few of, uh, I'm going to use this uh, supplier header, supplier address, supplier site, supplier site assignment, and the contact. All these uh, five templates I'm going to use. And the right side, the data was already associated uh, with this data set. So the data extraction is already done by this uh, name. I'll go and uh, just a drag and drop. So contact is done and uh, site assignment is done and site i'm going to associate it and address and here and now the header so at this stage so what i did so the data was already extracted from the article and keep it in this uh, data objects and uh, the left hand side i have a templates so that i just associated I haven't done anything much here to go and create a data model with the different objects or different rules, nothing. So just a mapping is done. I'm going to say apply it. So this got applied. So we can see that, you know, that these are the five templates are applied. And uh, let's go and take a look at a few of, you know, the data assessment part. So the data, what I'm going to do, so based on the status, and the supplier type i'm going to do the profiling first so that taking the supplier data and there there is a supply type called internal and the external and the status was active or inactive so based on that it's going to identify the rules it's going to profile the rules so what are required so i'm going to create a one group called m5 Supplier one, let's copy this. And threshold, I'm going to say 80. So it does mean that, you know, based on this group of fields, any rules are 
identified um, any data are identified more than 80 percentage the data is going to be converted as a rule say uh, one example uh, the supplier type says internal and active status and for uh, you know the credit limit should be uh, less than 5000 usd so that profile it's going to that profile is already created over here and that's going to produce the rule i'll go and apply it now the rule is uh, created for the custom sorry the vendor master now i'm going into the address i'm going to do the same way uh, i mean this step can be you know we can uh, skip it but still uh, we can go i'm going to do it uh, for all different five data models let's see how the rules are going to be created so the group i'm going to do it too and the sold this point of keep uh, 80 again and this time for the address i'm going to group together by the country and the state status so the based on the country any other you know attributes are going to be uh, defaulted or validated so let's go apply it close this and third i'll go here uh, to the sites and uh, keep it uh, name as a unique same threshold this time i'm going to choose the procurement uh, bu i don't want to keep it a status just a procurement based on the procurement uh, business unit so to go ahead and identify the rules i'll say apply close this one and go to the site assignment do the same thing based on the procurement bu and i'll put this as a four and 18 and pretty easy you know i can uh, uh, do this configuration now within few minutes and uh, finally the contact can go and choose administrative contact and the status and put it on a five and threshold again 80 and apply it that's it the whole configuration we done it so what we did so just went and choose the template and tied up with the source data and the group how you know the rules needs to be created based on the data groups that's what uh, we configured uh, over here and i'm going to apply it final commit is done let's go back and uh, you know it says the execution pending for this m5 i'll go and execute it so this time the data the behind the scene it's going to read all the data and it's going to bring the mapping along with the rules so now it's completed within a few seconds and uh, let's go and take a look at the review yep <laughs> so each and every object so we can refer it you know five objects one is a like header address site site assignment and the contact all these objects are available and over here you know the get clean stay clean part so all the mapped columns so I can go and refer it, you know, there are 13 columns are mapped for this contact. Let me take a look at, you know, the customer master, sorry, the supply master. And go here, supply name, type, and some attributes are mapped with the supply numbers, with the map to the segments, and supply type is mapped to the supply type. Status is mapped to the header status. And uh, these are the relationship column, which is, you know, still these columns are pending from the template, but the source data is, doesn't have any values. That's the reason it's not mapped well here. And, but the source template, you can refer, you know, still there are 118 columns, which is uh, still needs to be filled. But the, based on the data, only 10 columns are would be, you know, mapped. So the vendor name is mapped to the supply name. That's a smartness. You know, inbuilt uh, with the system, it automatically identified which column, you know, goes with, uh, you know, that uh, data model, right? And now I'll go here, and similar way for the address, so we can go and refer it. So let's take a look at, yeah, so mostly address name, state, city, address line one, everything, you know, country, everything, you know, mapped out here, and there are still, a hundred more columns which are pending to be mapped okay so now the interesting part here you know the the entire mapping you know quickly done based on the data and uh, if you want to edit or uh, tweak something 
for the business uh, requirement, so we can do that too. So by manually, I can go and map it and move it. I can do that, or I can you know remove or I can edit the existing one. That also doable. And interesting part are the rules side. Let's go and uh, click the rules. And there are two sections uh, if you note down that you know the rules from the template and rules from the data. So what does it mean? You know that they you know these are the validation rules. It out of the box, it is coming out from the template. It automatically picks, you know, what are the columns are mapped. So it's, you know, find out uh, what are the rules need to be applied. Okay, that's number one. And number two, from the data, so we mapped uh, two columns like the supply type and the supply status. So based on that, you know, it identified uh, there are uh, two rules were identified. So the mandate check, we can go and, you know, for this uh, status uh, A, for the contractor uh, type of a supplier is auto calculator, you know, the tax calculation override flag is, you know, mandatory. For the company type, supply type, or a vendor type. So all the four types, you know, the rule is uh, created. You can see a one rule. It's created to mandate check for this. And also it is doing some defaulting too. Uh, instead, you know, just to validate, the data cleansing part, you know, based on the threshold. So if it is active status for the supply type vendor, then this flags must be, you know, white. That's how it uh, defaulted. Uh, any data which is, you know, missing this default, the data curation will take care of it and fix the problem. So the rules are ready, the mappings are ready. And second part, you can go maybe, you know, onboard governance side. So what are the fields? You know, it's going to be used for the onboard governance. So the get clean and stay clean are here. The data is going to be come through and data curation is completed. When I am onboarding a new uh, vendor, so can be, yes. So based on the data itself, you know, the onboard governance also, you know, getting ready uh, over here. So that, you know, if I press another you know, preview complete, it's automatically create the entire data model and it's going to give Three different, you know, uh, three different uh, uh, views. One for the requester, one for the approver, one for the collector. So views available for the onboard governance. So let's go here. You know, <coughs> user assignment. You can see it. You know, who will be my requester for this uh, onboarding process, and who will be the collector and the approver. I can choose. You know, everyone. I mean, uh, <coughs> users who are you know want to be participate. I can do it, and simply I can you know. Uh, review complete and uh, that will take care of end-to-end -end, you know the data model creation but that's just for the time purpose you know i'm just uh, going back uh, to the ccls i'm oh, sorry i can do use the c planner user <clears throat> so let me log in into the c planner user and uh, already I generated uh, this particular uh, data model, which is available for us to go and uh, take a look at. So the Oracle uh, Supplier Master V3. And let's go here, Data Studio. And uh, you can uh, see here the different objects with the hierarchy is uh, made up of uh, automatically. And uh, if I go into this, uh, rules section, so the augmentation section. So we can see it, you know, there are 70 different rules, which is already part of uh, this particular uh, object. Let's take a look at uh, one. Let's put in order. So the address uh, patterns are, uh, we can see it, uh, the address tax number uh, for the Australia, it should be 11 and Italy 11 and for Netherlands 14 and Belgium. So all these different rules, so the BU rule, you know, we found, right? So we put up, you know, the BU is, uh, you know, going to be default. Let's take a look at, you know, this particular one. The Axum side. So this rule, it says, uh, it's a display change for this attribute. It's going to default. The rule for is a default. It's going to default for this address object. It's going to apply to the procurement BU attribute. And the value, we can see it. Uh, US one uh, business unit. So based on the data identified, it is defaulting the value over here so that uh, any upcoming or any onboarding data goes through, it automatically applied and uh, 
you need not you know user to be go and filling this data also uh, based on the conditions like uh, so if in case of a null okay wherein if a users are already did some you know changes so it don't apply but if in case of a procurement the bu was null then this particular rule will be triggered and it will default the data as a uh, sorry as a us uh, business uh, unit us one business unit that's how you know the whole rule everything is created and now we can go here you know the inbound process tied up so we can see that both applications are you know already tied up because this particular data model for ebs and for the fusion and the mapping everything you know available here go to the mapping and you can refer you know these uh, mappings are available address mapping is done and 17 columns are mapped and the site now there are three columns are mapped over okay. here so everything you know done now let's take a look at you know the quality process obviously once this inbound is uh, configured by naturally you know this data assessment helps to configure everything and uh, all i'm going to press the button start so once we press the start button it's going to go through the different uh, workflows right so the data cleansing data match merge and one of a cleansing activity so let's close this and one of a cleansing activity you can uh, see here uh, the upper case of a supplier you know active and defaulting alias defaulting and you know there are you know uh, several uh, things are there let's take a look at uh, you know the one cleansing part the organization name so it says you know uh, replace of uh, this uh, underscore uh, so the default rule it applied that you know instead of uh, if in case of a uh, my supplier name is having a underscore don't keep it just you know change it with null okay so that's what uh, does you know done it over here these rules are created from the template and let's go take a look at you know few you know executable uh, side Go here, and it's going to bring up uh, the data quality workflows. Although, if you can uh, refer it, how that is created. Now, I'll go here for the results side. How the results are look like. Now, it's waiting for me to review as a business users. So, the data. so here so let's take a look at you know few you can uh, refer you know there are quite number of uh, duplicates are grouped together and this uh, match and merge let me go and take a decision so already decisions are made all here you know the business users just to go and mock us review and do next process that's it so this much you know the quick uh, we can do all the data quality for the get clean and the stake clean side so that's it so, so the data you know uh, move to the next stage which is for my approval on this user so let's go here and you know check out you know in few seconds you know the data will be part here for the approval it's going for you know different uh, round of uh, data quality process everything the data will be comes over here. see here the data is you know already populated i still go here to update if want or if not i can uh, skip the step automatically data will be moved all the way to the oracle cloud or you know fixing the data back to the source system now i just go and validate it everything looks good i can simply approve or reject or you know revert so that's how the whole system you know uh, we design uh, for you know uh, make sure the data quality uh, e implementation is uh, made easy using the data assessment uh, options so so there are you know quite number of uh, benefits uh, within a uh, data as an atk macros so the key takeaways i would put in that this is entirely data driven so you know the whole business driven by the data right so same way the data is driven configure the end to end data model from the source data 
it's automatically identified and created into the system to govern or clean up the data based on you know source data rules also in plus so automated fitment rules which is a target system based on the target system so the rules can be applied so if the data is goes through data zen so completely you know data will be made you know the data quality percentage will be increased and the quality data will be migrated or moved into the target system this is our whole you know the approach using the data uh, data zen uh, tkm approach and uh, what do you surya yeah. what did you talk about uh, surya, you have know, the benefits uh, as you find uh, during your implementation okay. the first thing i i like to point out is the time and value the consider about amount of time that we will save uh, while choosing the modern approach of uh, data governance and data quality management will give you a valuable time and value added to your project time so next uh, please the second main point is the templates since we have all the standard templates whether it is for the ebs or the fusion cloud we have the ready to use templates which will readily kick start your project and reduce the project time lag next please the engagement the main engagement point here is it will make the users very comfortable with the user interface and experience and it will make the admin users easy to configure the required objects and execute this yep so thank you surya and uh, so this is the world number one you know low code uh, low code uh, now the platform so you know how i did it uh, the all these configurations and uh, how the results are produced and uh, we enabled uh, this uh, intelligent and you know by ml learning uh, ml learning programs so to help you know improve the data quality for any given uh, domain be to that uh, if it is a ebs or be to that a cloud uh, or any uh, uh, domains like a vendor master or a customer master or item master so the templates are available so just you know the data is going to be extracted and the data model will be created automatically and the rules will be autom i mean created to fix the data I'll finish it here thank you all so much for joining us today on this insightful webinar featuring modernized data quality for oracle ebs and fusion the master data journey featuring our esteemed speakers anbarasan murugan and surya prakash so we hope you found this presentation valuable thank you so much for your active participation and asking questions wishing you all continued success and innovation see you all soon yeah thank you thanks everyone for attending this session thank, thank you. you karen for you know posting this thanks everyone thanks everyone thanks, thanks everyone. my pleasure thank you for coming again